a student's overview of the ageless wisdom was carefully compiled from the following books by Alice A. Bailey. A Treatise on Cosmic Fire Esoteric Psychology, Volumes 1 and 2 Esoteric Healing Esoteric Astrology The Rays and the Initiations Students are encouraged to download the free PDF version of this overview by following the link in the video's description, or to order a printed copy at cost from the bookpatch.com, but are advised to read the original, unabridged books in order to gain deeper insight into the ageless wisdom. Students are also invited to join our online study group at facebook.com slash groups, slash students of the ageless wisdom. Chapter 5, A Treatise on Cosmic Fire The Motion of Matter The Third Logos The motion considered in this section is that due to the fire latent in matter itself, a motion that is the prime characteristic and basic quality of the third ray. His goal is the perfect blending of spirit and matter. His function is the manipulation of matter so as to make it adequate to the demands of the spirit. His motion is rotary, this revolution making the material more pliable. All of these are governed by the law of economy. The second logos, Vishnu, seeking to blend with the principle of intelligence, characterized by love. His motion is spiral cyclic. Availing himself of the rotary motion of all atoms, he adds to that his own form of motion, of spiraling periodical movement and by circulation along a spheroidal path, bringing two results. a. He gathers the atoms into forms. b. By these forms, he gains the needed contact, develops consciousness on the five planes of human development, refining the forms as the spirit of love spirals closer to its source. These actions are governed by the law of attraction. The indweller of the form eventually feels the attractive pull of its own self, the ego, which stands to it as the logos of its own system. Later, this process is repeated as the ego responds to the call of the monad. Therefore, a. The goal of the second logos is consciousness, achieved in cooperation with the third logos. b. His function is the building of forms to be his instruments of experience. c. His mode of action is cyclic and spiral. The first logos the ray of cosmic will, his mode of action is a literal driving forward of the solar ring pass not through space. His goal is the synthesis of spirits who are gaining consciousness through manifestation, and gaining in quality as a result. His function is, by means of will, to hold them in manifestation for the desired period and later abstract them back to their spiritual source. His work is controlled by the law of synthesis, governing the tendency to unification of the seven into the three and into the one. His mode of action is a progressive forward will. The ego, man on the physical plane is what the logos is to his system, and is likewise the animating will, destroyer of forms and producer of pralaya. The ego is extracosmic as far as the human being on the physical plane is concerned. The Effects of Rotary Motion Every sphere in the macrocosm rotates which produce certain effects. 1. Separation The repulsion effect is produced by rotary movement causing the differentiations of a solar system, the planes and the rays. The planes rotate latitudinally, east to west, while the rays rotate longitudinally. 2. Momentum, resulting in an internal effect, 
which prevents atoms from directly contacting other atoms. By keeping them at fixed points in space. 3. Friction, the environmental frictional effect produces a. Vitality of the atom b. Coherence of the atom c. Ability to function d. Heat is supplied to the unit e. Final combustion or disintegration of form, not matter 4. Absorption the receptive or attractive effect occurs through the depression at the top of all whirling spheres. Every atom is both positive and negative, receptive where inflowing force is concerned and radiator A where its own emanations are concerned. End of page 23 The qualities of rotary motion. Every rotating sphere of matter is characterized by the three qualities of inertia, mobility and rhythm. 1. Inertia, the state of every atom at the dawn of manifestation, at the beginning of a solar cycle or Mahamanvantara, at the commencement of a chain, a globe, or any spheroidal form whatsoever without exception. Inertia is the result of lack of activity of the fires of matter. These fires are latent, free from the stimulations of form life, during pralaya. Where form exists, the laws of attraction forward slash repulsion make radiation possible. Then comes stimulation, emanative effect, and a gradual acceleration by which the atom itself by its own rotary movement, produces the next, higher, quality. 2. Mobility, rotation eventually produces radiation, and in the case of matter, affects other atoms in its environment, whether that is cosmic, system, or the physical sphere of a single man. This eventually produces coherence of form for a period of time until rhythm is recognized. 3. Rhythm, the attainment of the point of perfect balance and equilibrium produces certain effects. a. The disintegration of form. b. Liberation of essence which the form confines. c. The separations of spirit and matter. D. The end of a cycle, whether solar, planetary or human. E. The production of obscuration. F. The reabsorption of the essence with the root of matter. G. The end of time and space as we understand it. H. The unification of the three fires. I. The synthetic activity of matter in the three types of movements, rotary spiral cyclic and forward progression, are produced by the interaction of the fires of matter, of mind and of spirit upon each other. When the point of balance is reached, the occupier of the form is loosed. Rotary motion and symbolism. Every rotating sphere of matter can be pictures using the same general cosmic symbols as those used for the portrayal of evolution. 1. The circle, represents the ring pass not of undifferentiated matter, the solar system or the body logoic, the planetary body of a heavenly man and human viewed etherically, a single cell within the human vehicle, or the atom of a chemist. 2. The circle with a point in the center, signifies the production of heat in the heart of matter, the point of fire. The first rotary activity, which produces the first radiation, the first pool of attraction and repulsion which causes the third symbol. 3. The circle divided in two, this marks the active rotation and the beginning of mobility of the atom. 4. The circle divided in four, the true circle of matter, the equal armed cross of the Holy Spirit 
who is the personification of active intelligent matter. It shows the fourth dimensionality of matter and the penetration of fire in the four directions. 5. The swastika concerns the fire extending not only from the periphery to the center in four directions but also circulating and radiating from and around the entire periphery. This signifies completed activity in every department of matter until it forms a fiery wheel. Motion and the centers. A word of warning is here sounded, let a man apply himself to a life of high altruism to a discipline that will refine bring his lower vehicles into subjection, and to purify and control his sheaths. When he has thus raised and stabilized his vibration, he will find that the development of the centers has pursued a parallel course. Much danger and dire calamity attends the man who arouses these centers by unlawful methods. It is not the part of a coward concerning careful and cautious movements in these matters, it is the part of discretion. Therefore, the disciple has three tasks. 1. Purify, discipline and transmute his threefold lower nature. 2. Develop knowledge of himself, equip his mental body, build the causal body by good deeds and thoughts. 3. Serve his race in utter self-abnegation. In doing this, he fulfills the law. End of page 24 The Nature of the Centers At the close of his long pilgrimage, man will have passed through each of the five kingdoms of nature on his way back to Source, 1. Mineral 2, Vegetable 3, Animal 4, Human 5, Spiritual. Man will develop full consciousness upon 1. Physical Plane 2, Astral Plane 3, Mental Plane 4, Buddhic Plane 5, Spiritual Plane. He accomplishes this by the use of the five corresponding senses. 1. Hearing 2, Touch 3. Sight 4, Taste 5, Smell. The treatise deals only with five centers. A. Base of spine physical. B. Solar plexus astral. C. Throat mind. D. Heart body. E. Crown atma. The lotuses of the centers. 1. Root, four petals in the shape of a cross. 2. Solar plexus, 10 petals. 3. Heart center, 12 petals. 4. Throat center, 16 petals. 5. Head center, Ajna equals 96 petals. 6. Crown equals 12 major petals with 960 around it totaling 1,068, or 356 triplicities. The evolution of these centers can be shown using the same five symbols. The circle, the wheel is dimly lit and has a correspondence to early Lemurian development. Circle with a point in the center, a point of glowing fire and rotation can be seen, as in Lemuria. Divided circle, rotary motion causes the point to radiate outward in two directions, appearing to split the vortex in two halves. This corresponds to Atlantean development. Circle divided into four, the center is exceedingly active, with the cross within its periphery rotating as well as the wheel itself. Its correspondence is in the fifth root race wherein man is sensing the spiritual, though functioning in the personal life. The swastika, the center becomes fourth dimensional, the inner rotating cross begins to turn on its axis, which drives the flaming radiance to the periphery. 
the center becomes more of a sphere than a wheel. The centers and the rays. All teachers of the wisdom follow the method of imparting a fact and then of leaving the pupil to follow his own deductions, thus developing discrimination, which is the main method whereby spirit effects its liberation from matter and discerns between illusion and that which it veils. The life of the pilgrim can be divided into three main periods. A. Period influenced by the personality ray. B. Period under the ray of the ego. C. Period under the monadic ray. Venus corresponds to the heart center in the logoic body and has an interrelationship therefore with all other centers in the solar system wherein the heart aspect is the one of greatest prominence. Saturn corresponds to the throat center, the creative activity of the third aspect. Our solar system, with the Pleiades and one of the stars of the Great Bear, form a cosmic triangle of three centers in the larger body. The seven stars in the Great Bear correspond to the seven head centers in that same being, who is even greater than our Logos. End of page 25 The Centers and Kundalini 1. Kundalini lies at the base of the spine and in the average man functions primarily in the vitalization of the body. 2. Kundalini makes three atonements during evolution. a. With the radiator a fires of the body, or prana. b. With the fires of mind at the top of the spine. c with the fire of spirit at a point where these two unites fires of matter and mind issue from the top of the head. 3. Each of the three channels within the spinal column blends these fires as they circulate through the triangle. 4. When Kundalini has blended with the pranic fire, the centers become three-dimensional, when it blends with solar fire, or mind they are united and become fourth-dimensional. When it blends with the electric fire of pure spirit after the third initiation, they take on two more dimensions. 5. Kundalini, as it is aroused, increases the vibratory action, not only of the centers, but in every atom of matter in all the bodies, etheric, astral and mental, which has a dual effect. 1. The elimination of coarse and unsuitable matter, in exactly the same way as a rapidly rotating wheel casts off matter from its surface. 2. It sweeps into its sphere of influence and builds it into its vibratory content. 6. Kundalini has two effects upon the etheric web. 1. It purifies the etheric form. 2. The web is gradually destroyed and by the time of the third initiation is reached, man should have continuity of consciousness. Unless he willingly foregoes the burning of the web by conscious action of the will. The centers and the senses. The senses might be defined as the means whereby the thinker comes in contact with his environment whereby he makes investigation and buys his experience and thus expands his consciousness. The senses in the animal kingdom are group faculty and demonstrate as racial instinct. The senses in man are his individual asset and demonstrate as a. The separate realization of self-consciousness b. Ability to assert that individualization c. A valuable means to self-conscious evolution. d. A source of knowledge. e. The transmuting faculty towards the close of life in the three worlds. Each of the five senses has a connection with one of the planes and also a correspondence on all planes. 1. Physical hearing gives man an idea of relative direction and to locate himself. 2. 
Astral touch gives him an idea of relative quantity. 3. Mental sight gives him an idea of proportion and enables him to adjust his movements. 4. Buddhic taste gives him an idea of value, and to discriminate. 5. Atmic smell gives him an idea of innate quality, and enables him to find that which is the same. Essence as himself. We might here, for the sake of clarity, tabulate the five different aspects of the five senses on the five planes, so that their correspondences may be readily visualized, using the above table as the basis. End of page 26 1. The first sense, hearing. Physical hearing. Clairaudience. Higher clairaudience. Comprehension, of four sounds. Beatitude. 2. The second sense, touch or feeling. Physical touch. Psychometry. Planetary psychometry. Healing. Active service. 3. The third sense, sight. Physical sight. Clairvoyance. Higher clairvoyance. Divine vision. Realization. Hearing is the first sense to be manifested revealing eventually the mystery of a. his own sound, physical b. his brother's sound, astral c. his group sound, mental d. the sound of the heavenly men with whom he is connected, buddhic e. the sound of the logos, atmic microcosmic sensory evolution physical plane 1 Hearing. 2. Touch, feeling. 3. Sight. 4. Taste. 5. Smell. 5th, gaseous. 4th, first etheric. 3rd, super etheric. 2nd, subatomic. 1st, atomic. Astral plane 1. Clear audience. 2. Psychometry. 3. Clairvoyance. 4. Imagination. 5. Emotional idealism. 5th. 4th. 3rd. 2nd. 1st. Mental plane 1. Higher clear audience. 2. Planetary psychometry. 3. Higher clairvoyance. 4. Discrimination. 5. Spiritual discernment, response to group vibration, spiritual telepathy. 7th, form. 6th, form. 5th, form. 4th, form. 3rd, formless. Second, formless. First, formless. Buddhic plane 1. Comprehension. 2. Healing. 3. Divine vision. 4. Intuition. 5. Idealism 7th. 6th. 5th. 4th. 3rd. Atmic Plane 1. Beatitude. 2. Active Service. 3. Realization. 4. Perfection. 5. All Knowledge 5th. 6th. 5th. 4th. 3rd. It can be noted that we have not summed up the two planes of abstraction on the Atmic and the Buddhic planes, 
the reason being that they mark a degree of realization which is the property of initiates of higher degree than that of the adept, and which is beyond the concept of the evolving human unit, for whom this treatise is written. End of page 27 End of chapter 5